Hero's Journey archetypes. Joseph Campbell not only came up with the monomyth, which is the one story to rule them all, but he also came up with the eight or so characters to rule them all. That every story has the same sort of eight archetypes. And I have the eight listed right here. Okay, so as we look at the hero, the mentor, the threshold guardian, the herald, the shapeshifter, the shadow, the trickster, and allies, I want you to think of these as job positions. Imagine like McDonald's. And everybody at McDonald's has a different job. One person does the grill. One person runs a register. One person mops the floor. So if we came up with eight jobs, we need all eight in order to run the place. Just like in your story, you need all eight of these to make your story special, to make it run. But we all know, sometimes places are understaffed. They don't have eight people to fulfill eight roles. They only got four. Well, guess what? The jobs still have to get done, even if you only got four people there. They don't say in the drive-thru, sorry, ma'am, we, um, we're not making fries anymore. We only got two people here tonight. They don't say that. If someone orders fries, you better find a way. That means you better pull the person mopping the floor to get back there and start making fries. And then get back to mop on the floor. So, in your stories, you might only have four characters. If that's true, they need to, some of them need to serve double duty. Does that make sense? So the jobs still have to get done. Now, if you have a big, huge epic, like Harry Potter or Star Wars, you got so many characters... It's easy for each one to specialize. Okay, you see what I'm saying? But that's a lot more work because you've got to create eight different people. All right, so it's really, as a writer, you determine how many people you have, but all eight jobs still need to get, need, need to get done. Got it? So let's talk about what each of these archetypes are. These are not stereotypes. Your characters are who they are. These are simply jobs that they must do in the story. So, the first job, the most important job, is the hero. The hero is not always somebody who rescues the, the maiden who got kidnapped. That's in all the video games. The hero doesn't always have to wear tights and have a cape. The hero is simply the person who goes through the death and resurrection and changes their ordinary world. That's the hero. What made them a hero? Well, they went through that death and resurrection. No one else did. They did. They changed the world. That's why they're the hero. Okay? So, in some stories, it's very simple to figure out who the hero is. Especially if the movie or story is named after them. Uh, Spider-Man. Who's the hero? Spider-Man. It's named after the hero. Other stories are not so easy. Training Day. There are two characters you go through the entire story with. Who's the hero? Well, we all know after watching this, it's the, the police, the, the white guy, as they say. The new guy. He's the hero. But if you watch the movie closely, it's almost like they're both the hero. And so students run into problems. Either, Mr. Wood, I don't have a hero in my story. You know what I say? You don't have a story. You have a bunch of people and events, but there's no story. Because remember I taught you the first thing about story? It's all about two worlds colliding. So if you don't have any collision, there's no story. There's just people doing things. You have to have a hero. What about Mr. Wood? I got three heroes in mind. Uh, it, just pick one and give the other people different jobs, okay? One hero. The mentor. Oh, that's the wrong picture. Here, there we go. Do you guys notice a similarity between these two pictures? That's kind of freaky. I don't know. <laughs> okay? So, hey, I, I, I did this to show you. You met one mentor, you met them all. They're all like the same. Their job is to provide motivation, to give insight. Um, if you only got a few people in your story, hey, mentors got to be uh, served double duty. Sometimes the mentor is also the threshold guardian. Like in the case of a 
uh, boxing coach and said, you're not leaving this ring until you can beat me. Okay? Now, he's not only the mentor, he's now become the threshold guardian as well. What about Trinity? What's the black guy? Okay, we'll go, <laughs> we'll go back to that. I'll tell you what he is. So, there's the mentor. Got it? Easy. Next, threshold guardian. We talked about that when we did plot. Their job is to guard that special world. They're not like the main bad guy. No, that's not their job. Their, their job isn't to oppose the hero directly. Their job is to guard that special world. Nobody gets in there unless they let them. Okay? They see if the hero is truly committed to this. So in my romance, I didn't come up with a threshold guardian. That might be someone who's like basically saying, no, you're not going to work with this guy unless you get approval or something like that. Okay? You need a threshold guardian. So they protect that world. In a romance, it's the person protecting that other partner's world, like the guy's mom, somebody, has to protect him. All right, the Herald. Herald is not a major part, minor role, but important. The Herald announces changes. They tell the audience and the hero that significant change is about to happen. It doesn't even have to be a person. It could be an event. It could be a shadow over looming Los Angeles. That means something is coming. Um, Shakespeare likes to put like thunder and lightning anytime something big is going to happen. So it's a herald. It's a usually they announce the call to adventure. Sometimes it's just a phone call, but it's still a role that's important. Shapeshifter. This is um, somebody whose allegiance is not quite clear. They can go on the good side or the bad side. Depends. They keep the audience on edge in Twilight. This is Jacob, because Edward is the shadow, which we'll get to in a minute. Bella's the hero. Jacob isn't the bad guy. No, he's a shapeshifter. He can either be on her side or not on her side. And he tends to bounce between the two. And he literally changes shape. So he changes into a werewolf. But your character doesn't have to physically change shape. But they appear and they reappear. Han Solo, he's there sometimes, and sometimes he's not. When Han Solo comes back, you don't know what mental state the guy's in. He might want to. He might have got paid off by Jabba the Hutt and will kill everybody. Hopefully, you're hoping he'll fight for you. But if the going gets tough, he might get going. You just don't know. You want to keep your reader interested in your story. Have a good shapeshifter, because they're the ones who keep everyone on edge. Right. Okay. So. They keep the hero on guard. They mislead the hero. They hide their intentions. Let me hurry up. Shadow is simply the opposite of the hero. Not necessarily bad guy. We don't call him the villain or the bad guy. They're just the opposite of what the hero is. So do this. If you guys are doing romances, make that other person the opposite of that other person. If the girl is organized, he's messy. If she loves sports, he hates sports. It's usually the other way around. But, you know, it's all right. Play with those things. The shadow is the opposite. They're the, that's the world. These are the two worlds that are colliding. Remember, you want conflict? Make them as opposite as you can make them. Different races, different creeds, different religions, different everything. And then make them, force them into the same moment at the same time you have a story. Okay, last thing, two more. The trickster is a character who in many ways is kind of funny you know they they make us laugh they uh, sometimes are kind of like the village idiot but you don't have to really have a funny guy in your story necessarily their function is to show us the absurdity of the situation they're the ones in the story that have the line what are you telling me it's us against them you mean there's only 40 of us and a hundred of them or they might say, are you crazy? This is suicide. So they don't have to be funny necessarily. But what's important is that they show us, they show the audience how things are getting out of control. And this is really important to heighten tension and to also relieve tension. So used properly, a trickster can keep your audience on board. Finally, we have the allies or the sidekicks. 
Uh, sometimes there could be a team or they can just be one ally, but their main job is to fill in the gaps where the hero is deficient. So a lot of times if the uh, hero lacks certain knowledge or technical knowledge, um, an ally can fill in the gap. Maybe our hero doesn't have very good social skills. Well, that's where you put an ally in there with social skills to get them through. Now, the allies don't always teach our heroes how to do things. They're more of a support system. Remember, the mentor has the role of the teacher. So the ally is basically supporting the hero, allowing them to complete this journey. And so how many allies does your hero need? Well, it depends on how many weaknesses they have and how willing you are to um, fill in the holes where those weaknesses exist. So that's all of the Hero's Journey archetypes. Just remember that it's, um, it's not exactly um, a stereotype. It's rather a position or a role that your characters play.